All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is, when you hear this message, I pray that you are poised to receive, to accept, and to respond to words of wisdom. So over the last few days, I shared a variety of lessons from a literary standpoint, from a psychological standpoint, from an educational standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, and all of the messages and the lessons are geared towards how what I'm doing is beneficial to you. And today I want to share a lesson with you that balances that balances it out a bit and, and lets you understand what's in it for me, because I am definitely getting something out of it. There's a reason why I am coaching you and advising you the way that I am. And you need to know that and understand that in order for you to uh, appreciate where I'm coming from and say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I get it. And um, there's a business concept called the lifetime value of your client. Um, when you're setting up your business, at some point you got to figure out, well, how much am I going to charge for what I do? But then in order for you to determine or, uh, you know, estimate how much you're going to generate in the long run and, you know, how you're going to estimate how much you're earning on a regular basis from your client base, you've got to also calculate or evaluate how long are you going to provide service for these folks and at what kind of a frequency, what kind of in intervals, right? So you could have a business model that's just a one-off, right? Um, I sell you a hat and that's it. Um, maybe you come back and I sell you a shirt. Maybe not. Maybe you come back and I sell you shoes or maybe not. Um, but it's a strictly transactional business model, you know, and it's one off. I get as many people in to buy hats or necklaces or shoes or whatever. And, you know, that's pretty much the the extent of our relationship. Then there's a, a, a model that is more aligned with with my own expertise and, you know, my my personal preferences, which is more like a school, obviously, uh, a school wherein you start at preschool and you stay until eighth grade. So when I start you at preschool, I'm looking at retaining you until eighth grade. If you start at the fourth grade, I'm looking at retaining you until the eighth grade. You start at the sixth grade, I'm looking at retaining you till the eighth grade, right? That's, that's more uh, in, in alignment with my motivation, right? So I'm teasing out the one-offs. To be totally honest, I don't really want to deal with the people who just want to buy a hat. Oh, you're just curious about this and you just want to know you what is this and, you know, uh, what's around the corner and what's behind door number three and I just want to get a reading and that's that's not my preferred audience. That, those aren't the people who I really want to deal with. To be honest, I do it, you know what I mean? Because that's part of the, the craft and the work and there's value in it, you know, helping people solve their kind of sporadic one-off problems. But that is not where I get the, where I see the most value of our tradition. I want to help you develop a practice, right? And so I was thinking about it and it, it reminded me of um, something not as simple as buying a hat or, or, or a necklace, right? More along the lines of buying a car. In my lifetime, I've earned, owned a variety of cars, right? First car I had was a BMW. Um, the Beamer wa had a name, right? BMW, but the Beamer was raggedy, to be honest. Um, and, and so in order to get the Beamer into up to par, right? It, it was, it was going to cost me more than the car cost me. I got the car for almost nothing. And so to, to really get the car and remedy the basic problems, it was, it was going to cost me more than I paid for the car. It was going to cost me more than the car was worth, to be honest. So 
It didn't take me long. I drove the Beamer for, I don't know, a year, year and a half. I let the Beamer go. I had a Volvo. Uh, the Volvo was a car I drove when my family was really young. I liked the Volvo because it was reliable. It was sturdy. It wasn't one of these uh, new fiberglass cars. It was, you know, it was a car that was made of some good heavy steel. And I knew it could withstand impact. And um, I had a good, reliable Volvo mechanic. And uh, so he could fix pretty much everything on the car, everything on the car, really. Um, but the Volvo had these these specialized parts. Volvo was kind of like um, Mac, Apple. There were certain things that only Volvo could could um, fix, and there were certain things that only you know only Volvo had the parts for. So I don't know. Once it was the electrical system, and it cost me like seven hundred fifty, eight hundred dollars. Another time, there was this little air conductor thing that. It was like another 850. It took the, the guy maybe 15 minutes to replace it. There was little stuff like that that were Volvo specific and very expensive. Right? In addition to this regular maintenance, there would be these incidentals that just were really high. Then um I had a Honda. Oh, I love the Honda. The Honda was was like zippy, it was fast, it was sporty. Good on gas, very reliable, easy to maintain. I had a, another real good mechanic. I could drop it off in the morning. I could pick it up in the evening, like every time, like clockwork. It was never a problem like that. But the Honda was accessible to everybody. Uh, you could start that car with a daggone popsicle stick. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? That's a slight exaggeration. You could pretty much take any car key and start this Honda with it. So... Um, I, I kept the, the the Honda just because it was so reliable and so fun to drive. But uh, in the in the long run, it just was more trouble than it was worth. I had to let the Honda go. Then I got a, a Toyota, and the Toyota hit, you know, every every value point, and I kept the Toyota. When I re got rid of one Toyota, I replaced it with another Toyota. And I think for the foreseeable future, I'll stay with the Toyota, you know, but. If I had had a mechanic in my corner, if I had an uncle who happened to be a mechanic, then he would have been able to help me troubleshoot all these cars from the beginning and say, hey, you know what? For what you're doing, for the money you make, for the lifestyle that you have, mm, don't even mess with that BMW. Yeah, man, you know, the Volvo is, the Volvo is going to be cool for this and that. But to be honest, these are the, the things that you're going to have to deal with it's inevitable you're not going to be able to get around this don't mess with that volvo and that honda listen you don't even know this about that honda they're going to be in and out of that honda like every time you go into the supermarket leave that honda alone this is where you need to be right now for where you are in life and what you need this toyota is going to bring you the most joy you bring that car to me three times a year it's going to cost you maybe five hundred dollars a hit and the car is never going to be a problem. You're never going to miss a day of work getting it fixed. It's never going to have these these crazy absorbent costs. Like I can pretty much guarantee you a, a, a consistent, orderly lifestyle around maintaining this Toyota. Right. And so that's where I am with you, with with advising you with Orisha Lifestyle. I'm your uncle who happens to be a mechanic. And I'm, I'm advising you to go with something from the start that will allow you to have total freedom. You, you're going to commit to some very specific obligations and, and habits. And it's almost a guarantee that this thing is going to serve you for life. Right. And um, if, if you know, I also had a job where uh, I got to, you know, I had to rent cars because I traveled a lot for this job. So I would, you know, if I want to be extravagant, I, I could rent something exotic for a weekend. I could rent something exotic for a week and get a chance to see what it's like to drive around in, in this, the hottest new whatever. Right. But I could do that because it was it was it was isolated. I wasn't I wasn't committing to something that was going to become a liability in a very short period of time. And, and that's what I'm trying to advise you uh, to do. 
Don't make commitments based on your short-term interests, your short-term goals and that are going to quickly become liabilities. And what's in it for me is that I get to be your maintenance guy. I get to, to work on the, the, the thing that is going to be so reliable and so dependable that we're, we're never going to really be dealing with um, chaos and disruptions. Okay, so that's my motivation to help you to make decisions that are going to help create a, a lifelong relationship between us that is going to be steady and consistent. Um, and, you know, quite honestly, what I see, the problem is that a lot of folks are approaching Orisha kind of like, you know, car. You're you're approaching Orisha the way I was approaching cars. But the difference is that I could get rid of the BMW. I could get rid of the Volvo. I could get rid of the Honda. You can't get rid of Shonko. You can't just be getting Ogun and then just get rid of it. You got Obatala and then you just let it go. I know people are 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 moving in that direction, right? You think, you know, well, you know, uh, they told me I could just take it to the river. Oh, they told me I could just take it to this place. But we're talking about your soul. We're talking about things that you are infusing your, your spiritual energy into. Don't do that. Don't approach Orisha like a car. Slow down. Take some good advice. Establish something that is going to suit your lifestyle. Make the decisions in the beginning, understanding that this thing can quickly go from being an asset to a liability. And you need to understand where that line is so that you can make wise, long-term decisions. That is what I want to help you to uh, achieve and maintain in your spiritual journey. Okay? And so once you understand that and you appreciate that, as it pertains to your car, as it pertains to your spiritual life, you're going to see how it pertains to your job, how it pertains to where you live, how it pertains to your relationships, how it pertains to your friendships, right? There's a there's an ass assessment that you need to be making based on what's an, an asset and what's a liability. And, but you need somebody who's also in your corner helping you to assess that and make the decisions so that you don't get yourself into a situation where you know, you buy off more than you can chew. So this is a lesson that is for the leaders. Uh, this is not only for people who um, need to have support and, and services over a lifetime, but even for the folks who um, really intend on becoming service providers yourselves, right? I want to coach you and show you how to position yourself as someone who's building lifelong relationships with your population, with your community, and not be a salesperson who's just trying to constantly get people to buy stuff, buy stuff, buy stuff that they're not ready to maintain or uphold. All right. So if you're one of those people and you really want to improve the world through positive influence, then I want you to find out how Oloye or Bafemi Origunwa and the Orisha Lifestyle Academy can help you take your practice and your life to the highest level possible. Visit me at obafemio.com or orishalifestyle.com. Let's start working together to help you live the medicine that will heal your life and heal the lives of those who you are destined to serve. I look forward to working with you. Bye for now. Odabo.